Good afternoon and welcome. I'm David Fearon, your host for today's Duran Global Web Webinar, Six Steps to S Successful Strategic Planning. Wow. <laughs> Six Steps to Successful Strategic Planning. That is a mouthful, but it will be a great webinar no matter what. So let's move on. We'll be taught today by Duran Chairman and CEO, Dr. Joseph Tefeo. Joe is one of the world's foremost experts in transformational change and breakthrough quality management. For nearly 30 years, Joe has worked as a trusted advisor, helping business leaders increase sales, reduce costs, and improve customer service, all through the deployment of performance excellence programs such as business process quality management, Lean, Six Sigma, strategy development, and change management. Joe has just sent to the publisher, McGraw-Hill, the seventh edition of Duran's Quality Handbook, Global Handbook of Business Excellence. Watch for this this fall. Now, before we proceed, we'd like to take care of a few housekeeping chores. First, we'd like to check the audio and make sure everybody is hearing me. If you can hear me, please go to the silhouette of the person uh, at the top of your left-hand side of your screen and use the menu and raise your hand. Raise hand. So let's see. I guess it would be silly to ask if no one can hear me raise your hand. <laughs> but there are other options, as you'll see, as you scroll down, um, speed ups, whatever the disagree, agree. There will be other things that you may be using this for shortly. Looks like we've got a lot of yeses. So that's great. You also see on the left-hand side of your screen uh, where you can ask questions for Joe and me. It's a Q&A. As a moderator, I may ask Joe to pause and address a question, or he may see a question and do that himself. But all questions and comments will be carefully noted so that we can learn what's on your mind about this important topic. To answer one question that is always asked, yes, the slide deck is available and will be sent out to participants after the conclusion of the webinar. A recording of this webinar will also be posted to duran.com soon. This is a good moment to suggest you also just download from your Apple or Android source Duran's free app, Quality Essentials. It's a rich resource for all of us who strive for performance excellence. Now, with six steps to strategic planning, which I still can't say, is Joe DeFeo. Joe. Thank you, Dr. Firon, and to avoid me stumbling, I think we should take a look at this statement. And there are four words that start with S and see who can say it three times real fast. Actually, five words if you count six. I don't think we could ever come up with a statement with that many words starting with the letter S. Oh, my goodness. But, uh, I will skip it and just say we're going to talk about six steps today. And uh, thank you. We have a, quite a group of folks from around the world. It always amazes me how many people are up in the middle of the night or early in the morning. But thank you for participating. Uh, we continue in our series of bringing you a monthly webinar focused on topics that we gleaned from our uh, participants and registrants to our website and our own opinions, of course. And uh, it's strategic planning season for many organizations, which typically happens in the summer and fall. And uh, so we're going to try to provide some uh, information that may help you help your organization. So first question, you know, does your organization really need a strategy? Take a moment, read this, and uh, tell me to see if you can write down Q&A where this came from. Okay, a couple of you know, for those of you who uh, grew up in the United States and probably England, I don't know where it came from, this is Alice in Wonderland. And I use this slide when I'm with executives to answer the question, do we need a strategy? And the answer is no, we do not. Uh, in the absence of a strategy, uh, you can just go along where you're going day after day and eventually you'll get somewhere. Uh, the problem is if you want to get somewhere predictably and if you want to get somewhere different than where you thought you were going, uh, having a strategy 
uh, is a very important activity, uh, not just a good childhood book. Um, but what we want to be able to do is to be able to have an agreement in an organization as to where we are going. Now, many organizations have a bit of a difficult, a bit difficulty uh, when they are uh, trying to set out strategically and create a longer term plan. Uh, we find that organizations uh, rarely track their performance against long term plans. Uh, and what they do is they set out a strategic plan, say one to five years or three to five years, or even longer than that. Uh, but they fail to review against that plan because they tend to review against the annual business plan. And so without looking forward enough, uh, you may not get where you want to go. Additionally, some organizations, we particularly see this in hospitals because there's so many ways to measure performance in a hospital, there are just too many things to measure. And so by having too many things to measure, things don't get done. So you have to actually think about what uh, what gets measured gets done and what metrics really matter. Uh, some companies, and although this seems pretty good to me, 63% uh, of their financial performance to their strategies breaks down in planning and execution. Uh, not surprising that so many break down because part of strategic planning is also strategic deployment. And strategic deployment means how do we execute day-to-day, -day, week to week on that strategy. Uh, and my last point here is that um, many or employees don't fully understand the business strategy, although they get impacted by it on a day-to-day -day basis because decision making is usually based on the plans. Day-to-day um, -day on the business plan and the business plan is created based on a long-term plan. So if it's only in the heads of in hearts of a 1% or 10% uh, or 93%, there's a pretty good chance it's not going to get executed. So what we'd like to do today is give you some points on what you can do to avoid these from happening uh, with your organization and with your strategic planning. So there's six, uh, not really six steps, but six points we want to make. Uh, one, know what strategic planning is and what it is not. Uh, it's not a template-driven fill in the blanks, let's do it to check off the box. It's an activity where you engage and collaborate with leadership on where we want to go. It's not definitive, it's a look into the future uh, based on the information we have. Also, understand that strategic planning is a process. It's not an event. There's a series of tasks that have to be done over time to continually refine and execute on the plan. Third, we call it play catch ball. Uh, many organizations create a strategic plan at the highest level without engaging anyone, and then they expect everyone to follow that plan when they've never seen it or participated in it. So we use the word catch ball, as if you're playing with a child and you threw the ball to the child, they catch it and they throw it back to you. Um, the difference is when we play catch ball with strategic planning, uh, we throw the strategic plan to the organization, they play with it, comment on it, and send it back, and we adjust our plan. And the more we do that, and the better we get input, the more engaged they're going to be, and the easier it is to get buy-in later. If you're a large organization, obviously you're not going to do that with every employee, but large organizations can also play catch ball by having focus groups throughout the organization reacting to the strategic plan. The fourth item is alignment. We see many, many organizations that have uh, performance improvement initiatives, and those initiatives, uh, the good ones, are aligned to the business plan, those that are not. And we're going to talk about alignment and how initiatives and business initiatives should be uh, in, in line with the business plans. Uh, also, this is where some organizations fail to recognize that if you set out a new direction with your plan, it may require some new structures or at least some infrastructures, and I'm going to talk about that. And lastly, uh, no good plan, no good task goes without some review and periodic adjustment. 
um, and no strategic plan is ever that perfect. Uh, you're looking into a crystal ball. Uh, we have a question here. Where and when do you include review of all competition and or collaboration? Uh, without getting into the detail which I'm coming up, uh, catch ball can be played with customers, suppliers, and staff. And what our strategies are should be based on a review of your competition uh, and the data along with it. And I think you'll see that coming up. So let's talk about what strategic planning is. Um, we hear, I want to do a vision session. I want to do a mission setting session. We have organizational goals. We have strategic planning. Uh, strategic planning simply is the organization's process of defining its future direction and then making decisions on what resources we're going to put towards this direction. Another way of saying it, it's a set of aimed at targets. Now, the targets themselves are not going to be very specific. Uh, it might mean something as simple as saying, we want to be number one in our market in customer service by 2025. And being number one in our marketplace uh, requires us to change the direction we're going because we're not there now. Uh, so strategic planning is long-term planning with a focus on what we are going to plan for and what it might look like when we get there. Now, strategic planning is a, an activity where we really look at the future, which we can call that a vision. Some people do call that the mission, but we like to call a vision as a future state. Uh, it requires playing catch ball. Now we say new direction. It may be the same direction you're going, but after new markets or new customer bases or at new targets. In either way, catch ball is important. Uh, it usually includes long-term goals, uh, say three to five years out. And keep in mind, the farther out you get, the more uh, difficult getting precise with them are. Uh, once again, if you're in a hospital, uh, hospitals are being measured usually three years prior to today. So they're getting information based on how they're going to do uh, today and three years from now. So having something at least three years is, is usually a very practical one. Uh, many years ago when I began this career, uh, organizations were shooting for 10, 15, 20 years as a strategic direction. But today, uh, organizations and technology move so fast that anything beyond three to five years is probably uh, not very useful except in large capital expenditures. Um, strategic planning requires some champions, just like any uh, organizational uh, activity. And these champions could be um, C-suite, it could be senior people, uh, but somebody has to be a champion. I remember a number of years ago the executive at Duracell, um, the CEO walked around with a strategic plan in his briefcase or back pocket and anytime anybody asked about the plan he would open it up and explain it to him. And that was his mission, he was the champion. And that's what we mean about a champion, someone who's willing to take it to heart uh, incidentally, that organization was very successful, and that CEO was labeled as one of the top five best executives uh, in the country uh, back in the 90s. It requires that you identify and provide resources, uh, meaning in large amounts that we're going to have a team, we're going to have people. Uh, does it have to get down to the nitty gritty? Um, and it obviously will have some timestone timelines and milestones and some kind of review. Um, it's also important to know what strategic planning is not. <clears throat> it's not a leadership team event, or it shouldn't be. Um, it shouldn't be, let's get together, create the plan, and let's throw it at everybody. Yes, leadership starts it, leadership participated, participates in it, but it should seek out perspectives of a wider range of people, uh, whether they're outside advisors, internal staff, customers, the board, suppliers, advisory boards. Um, gaining an understanding of where to go will only make it better and also allow for 
buy in quicker at a later time. It's also not about leaders spending time filling out templates, or worse, a strategic planning department that makes leaders fill out templates. Uh, yes, you might have some kind of paper uh, to fill in uh, or some kind of document, but as you'll see, there are many templates online uh, to be able to know what goes into a strategic plan. And unfortunately, once you have a template, everybody wants to try to fill in the box. Uh, and you forget about the purpose, and that is to have a discussion and dialogue. Uh, it's not a one-time mission setting event. You can't just go into a room and come out and say, we got it. Uh, I use the expression, it takes a village, because you need all those people, and you need a little time to process. Playing catch ball doesn't just happen in, in days. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't move on your strategy. It just says that we have some time to work on it and don't expect it to get done in a day. Um, the, most business plans define functional objectives. And the functional objectives, for the most part, can be attained. However, many of our customers, and many of the business objectives, require looking across functions. And once you look across functions, then you should be establishing cross-functional goals. For instance, and I'm using the hospital one as an example, following a patient through the emergency room who may then get admitted, who then gets treated, and gets discharged. Uh, that goes through multiple functions. Uh, the admissions people, the emergency room nurses, emergency room doctors, possibly lab, possibly if they're admitted, uh, the floor and floor nurses, uh, the discharge planners, care folks, etc. None of them own the whole process. So a organization must create some multifunctional goals, and that looks across many functions. And it is the single biggest difference between a business plan and a strategic plan says we will have multifunctional goals and multifunctional teams attacking those goals. Uh, and don't make it a non-value added, time-consuming, useless activity. Uh, and that is my favorite phrase because non-value added time-consuming, useless activities, uh, we don't have time for that. It's better off not to do a plan than it is to try to do that. So if we know what strategic planning is and is not, we then need to look at it as a process. Uh, a process, uh, as you know, could be something as simple as a bunch of boxes on a chart like I have here. But more importantly, uh, there's inputs and outputs, and that's what a process is. Um, usually, if we are renewing a planning process, or a planning cycle, um, we re review our mission. Uh, the mission being, what are we here to do? What is our business for? For instance, a, a university's mission is to educate future business leaders. Our vision might be, to have the best medical doctor program in our market area. The values that we operate under might be different from business to business, industry to industry, but the values set a guide for how we're going to act. Now, if we are going into a strategic planning process to possibly change our company mission, vision, values, then we want to get input from multiple sources, as stated, so that we can have as much information available to us. For instance, the question came up, uh, do you uh, include the competitors? Well, what we would want to know is, what is the competitive landscape, and why is it important for us in the future, and what could it be doing, or what will it do to us that might force us to change our mission, vision, and values? Or more importantly, it might set how fast we have to move, or what targets we have to move to. Uh, but once we have an understanding of these three items, then we establish longer-term goals. Years ago, it used to be called BHAGs or um, anything like it, long-term objectives. Uh, but BHAGs is big, hairy, audacious goals. Uh, they're longer-term. They're bigger. Uh, they talk about market share and customer satisfaction and maybe outcomes, financial. Uh, but usually, the financial ones are a result of the long-term goals. 
if we get number one in the marketplace, there's a series of annual goals that might be affected that are financial. So we set out to break it down into long-term, annual, and then the day-to-day, week-to-week implementation. Uh, we also need uh, a review and audit of those activities, and then a periodic assessment, annual assessment of each of them. So it is a process that has supplier, uh, that has inputs and outputs. Um, so when we talk about it as a process, we want you to think about it as a series of activities. Now, the leadership team may spend more of their time on the mission, vision, values, and long-term goals, but as you deploy, which means move through the organization, uh, other people will begin to take the long-term goals and convert it into annual goals. Now, I'd like to take a pause here for a moment and engage you. And this is a two-part question. Uh, well, it was a two-part question. Let's see if I can get the first part. OK. Well, let's try this one. OK, got a little glitch here. So I'm going to ask uh, for some help from my staff. Okay, so let's start here. Um, you can pick as many as you'd like. So go ahead and um, I want to kind of know what areas of this presentation, now that I gave a little picture of what strategic planning is, that uh, might be of interest to you, uh, more interesting to you folks. Very interesting because um, what we're finding is that many leaders have very good strategic plan, have collaborated on it, understand that it's a process, but fail to move it beyond the C-suite or beyond the leadership. Uh, that clearly falls into playing catch ball and alignment. And uh, I'm glad uh, to see that we're not that far off in our in our knowledge base. Uh, so the good thing is I've, I've got quite a bit of discussion coming up on just those two things. Hey, can I also do that to learn a little bit? Um, and so I hope uh, it helps you out. also want to remind you that you can ask a question at any time. I do get to see them. And as you can see, I, I try to uh, respond to them. If I don't, my staff is yelling at me to do so. Another way to look at the strategic planning process it's just a different model uh, of, of a similar thing. And you look at it from an organizational structure that the leadership team sets out direction and deploys goals. The lower levels implement various initiatives and projects to carry out those goals. And then maybe for one year, two year, three year. Uh, we review and manage and adjust and give feedback. Uh, and then we daily carry out our normal processes and we execute them. Um, how that uh, translates into uh, something new, maybe to your organization, is that you know what you're trying to understand is the voice of the customer and the voice of the business and set that direction. Um, Hoshin planning is another term for strategic planning. It's the ability to deploy aligned goals and play catch ball. I'll talk about that shortly. Um, and then you align your plans, you have management reviews, and then what methods we use to manage day to day whether it's just operational management systems or Lean or Six Sigma, those are methods to help us get where we want to go. Now, as said, strategic, or strategic planning and strategy begins with a vision um, or revisiting the current vision and adjusting the strategy or the plan is also one and the same. Uh, so just to refresh, you know, we want to define the future state. Uh, and usually where we're going. That could just mean we want to be the best or better or change direction completely. Um, the deployment of that is well, how do we going to achieve that? What do we think we have to do differently to get there? Uh, and can we break it down into smaller parts so we can monitor ourselves so that each year we're moving in the right direction? And then what holds that together? It could be a policy statement, our value statement, um, something that says, this is how we are going to operate 
while we achieve our goals. We're not just going to go willy-nilly and do whatever we want. We're not going to go against rules and regulations. We're going to be an ethical and um, high employee engagement organization. Uh, we're going to use scorecards. So although strategy begins with a vision, the strategic plan doesn't happen unless you have something to hold it all together with. Can I see a show of hands? How many of you, how many of your organizations you feel have a very effective strategy where the employees actually understand what's going on? So by a show of hands, that means I do. Wow. So, okay, here we go. We've got a few lucky souls. Thanks, Jim. I'm glad that you do. Uh, you might have come in later, but you can do a uh, show of hands on the, on the little screen there by clicking on that, and it'll raise your hand so I can see everybody. So I'm going to assume that um, there was two parts to my question. You have a strategy and employees know about it. So I'm going to give you my second poll. Um, if your organization does not, you don't feel they have a good strategy or employees are uh, not well understanding it, tell me why. Why do you think in your organization um, your strategic plan is not deployed well or employees don't know about it? So take a, take a uh, couple seconds here and 10 words or less, tell me why. So 7,000 employees, hard to reach them all. Too many goals and metrics, no priority. Uh, lack of communication and leadership. Keep it in the C-suite. You guys don't need to know this. Poorly designed systems. All the things that we see and you see. And we'd like to not see that, but we do. Um, I'm going to give you a story. And if you were on a strategic planning event we had last year, you might have heard it. but. Uh, one of the great assessments of performance is the National Award for Excellence, the Baldrige Award in the U.S., and very similar awards around the world. And uh, one of the activities asks, what percent of your employees are highly engaged and understand the strategic direction of the company or organization? And it's based on, in, in, it's based on asking 100 people randomly throughout the organization what percent of them uh, says they understand it. And so you get this percent out of 100 people, and you get kind of a good feel for where you're going on. I remember visiting a, uh, two organizations, and they said, uh, using a similar question, how do you know your organization's, what your strategy is, and your role in it? And in one organization, uh, the company vision was printed on the helmets of all the employees and not one of those people could ever tell me what the strategy was and how they related to it. In another organization, asking the same question and seeing no strategic words mentioned anywhere, almost every employee I talked to knew exactly what the strategy was. Reaching out to 7,000 or 10,000 or 2,000 or 100,000 employees is about deploying the vision and strategy down to the levels where you get the engagement of everybody. It doesn't mean sitting down with 7,000 people and explaining it to them. It means deploying it to them. So at my, my level, what do I need to know and how is it linked back? So as we continue our presentation, I want you to think about your and what you might be able to offer them to do differently. Uh, and if you don't know a response, ask us and we'll try to get you one. Okay, let's take a roll here. Let's play catch ball. What is catch ball? Uh, well, Dr. Duran said it best. Uh, you need collaboration and participation by the people that are going to be impacted, not just in the execution of the plan, 
but in the planning itself. You can't expect people, one, two, or 7,000, to participate or buy in if they know nothing about where we're going, where we're headed. So an organization should be able to take their time, go a little slower, and have no surprises. Uh, Dr. Duran, for those of you who don't know, uh, was quite the uh, witty gentleman, and he always seemed to hit it right on the head. So catchball is a means to get collaboration and participation before you say, this is our final plan, this is what we're going to do. It actually creates that uh, ability to collaborate and engage at enough levels and in, with enough diversity so that you can deal with organizational complexity. You can create the conditions that you want people to work together. You gain the cooperation you want. Um, that you have people that are included in the development actually getting a chance to respond and act on what leadership is proposing. And it also sets up managers with what's coming down the pipe. And so they can then start to plan their own uh, catch ball with their staff. Now, catch ball also requires strategic alignment. And strategic alignment means if I know we're going in this direction because I've been told and I've had a chance to participate in it, then I need to know what we're going to do differently and when, and I need to align my resources to that. Uh, so it's the process of linking people and resources to strategy and objectives so that we're all working at least in some common direction. Uh, a better way to see that is a pretty linear way that on the far left of your screen, uh, long-term vision and strategies or key objectives, followed by lesser year strategic goals uh, and maybe uh, annual goals and then projects or initiatives. Alignment means if I'm working on a day-to-day, month-to-month project or initiative, it's going to help us achieve some goal. The achievement of those annual goals will help us achieve longer-term goals. So alignment means if I'm working in the trenches and I'm a line person, and I'm told to do day-to-day -day work, the work that I do is actually going to benefit by making good product or delivering good services, and the extra activities I participate on, like the extra training or the extra process improvement teams, actually are working together in alignment to achieve some goals of the organization. Uh, Hoshin planning, uh, in the Japanese term, um, Hoshin Kanri, strategic deployment, are all one and the same. They're the ability to get us thinking all in the same direction and aligning our resources to that. When things are out of alignment, we go slower, and the organization itself has bumpy roads. Think about your automobile when it's out of alignment. It shakes down the road. You may get there okay, but it just takes a lot more discomfort. Uh, additionally, when you start to align, you may realize that some of the new goals have to be achieved by looking uh, top-down, obviously, through the organization. But as you start to deploy those goals through the divisions and down to the functions, you have to get out of the belief that all goals get achieved department by department. And you need to create an infrastructure, a means to bring people together to start to understand how products and services flow across the organization. Typical infrastructure of process improvement, which helps us do that, is when we organize some kind of leadership council, which says, we're going to periodically review our plan. We're going to make sure we talk about it across our business divisions and functions. We're going to make sure we have appropriate steering teams and appropriate support teams, like the performance excellence team, so that we can break down those barriers and look across. And then we're going to make sure that we have multifunctional projects, not just functional ones. So this infrastructure laid on top of the organizational structure is part of the requirement to help move faster and also help get work done in the way the patient, the customer, a product is developed by cutting across 
many, many parts of the organization. The maturity of your ability to manage multifunctionally may end up with a full-time process owner. Uh, it may end up with um, full-time business process teams that manage across functions. But many organizations fail to look at the need for an infrastructure and they don't understand why they can't move the needle on their metrics. They can't move uh, the organization forward. Uh, one, they're maybe unaligned. They're not doing the right things. Two, they could be aligned but not having the right people multifunctionally work on them. So organizational structure is key. And infrastructure is even more key. And what it helps you do, it gets buy-in top down. Uh, so something fundamental to your strategic plan is getting upper management to deploy to lower management by truly understanding what their management wants. And so they turn those into day-to-day -day activities. They turn them into local metrics. Uh, and you have to have periodic review of that. So leadership buy-in occurs when you get leadership together. When you keep leadership apart in their own functions, they could sub-optimize the system. Therefore, I'll achieve my goal, but the organization will not achieve its goal. So what we want to make sure is we put infrastructure in place to allow people to collaborate across functions. And it may mean that one function gives up something so the other function can do better so that the whole organization does better. That is quite a mature step for many leaders. Organizational structure forces the alignment. When you put people on a multifunctional team and then tie that to their performance, they have no choice but to work together. If you leave people in their functions, the high performing ones will find, seek and find people to work with, but the average person feels uh, uncomfortable in not able to walk out of the department and get engaged other people. So you have to force that alignment. It's not mandatory. I'm sorry, it is mandatory. It's not um, a choice. Now, we also want to make sure you do this organization-wide. So uh, we have an expression here at Duran that no organization moved forward in mass. It went single file. So one division moves out and gets it right. Another division moves out. Another leader does it. Uh, unfortunately, that's just the way the human beings work. The speed at which you can go faster is dependent upon how fast you can put an infrastructure in place that moves everybody multifunctionally. Now, a lot can be said about communication, and someone earlier on said we have 7,000 employees and it's just hard to get to them. More than likely, uh, it's not going to take one event for communication. It's going to talk, it's going to be um, emails, um, devices, bulletin boards, um, meetings, focus groups to communicate the vision and strategic plan. The better you do it, the faster you move, the worse you do it, the slower you move. Uh, many organizations don't set up a communication strategy uh, and they don't realize that, you know, five to six percent of their population turns over every year and on any given day someone new is in the company. So it's not something you do once, it's a process. You have a communication process for deploying your plan and communicating that plan. Uh, you cannot over-communicate a strategy. You can only under-communicate it. Uh, the last item is to uh, reflect on where you are at any point in time, at least quarterly, we believe. If you can do it monthly, great. Uh, but review where we are. Uh, where are the projects? Where So at the lower levels and mid-levels, where are the projects and are they going to get done? At the divisional level, are the projects adding up to our goals? And at the highest level, are the goals adding up to our strategies? Uh, and so... The regular review allows adjustment and also creates an early warning sign, uh, early warning that we're not going to meet our goal uh, or we are going to meet our goal faster than we should. So the more, and now with technology, we're getting better, better understanding of where we are on any given day, but people still fail to go back and compare it to the strategy. Uh, and by the way, a good strategy may only be a couple pages long. So it's not like we got to go back and spend hours and days doing that. Uh, but we, need, we do need a regular review, uh, and I, we call it adjustment, 
uh, meaning something might have to change uh, because we're not getting where we thought we would be. We're not moving fast enough. Competitiveness changed. Market changed. Uh, some performance metric uh, had to change. So uh, regular review allows to take a look at our measures, the degree at which we're meeting our objectives, to see whether we have to speed things up, slow things down, or even change our resources uh, depending on how we're doing. Now, I can't possibly teach strategic planning to you in one hour, but I'm going to do my best at uh, doing that with this presentation. Uh, but a couple of things before I fi finalize. When you do a regular review and adjustment, um, you're looking at scorecards. Scorecards may be really good or really vague. The answer is, how do I know how I'm doing? If you have vague scorecards, you need to have more collaboration. If you have good scorecards, you probably can get by with less because we can see the score. Um, but it also provides transparency. It gets people excited. It gets them to understand how they sit, fit in the picture. Um, it says this is really important to management because I'm hearing we had a strategy, we had communication. Now they're holding accountable. Uh, we're doing audits. And these things are really good. I see them as being believable. The same way financial goals, sales goals happen in an organization. We get bombarded with weekly, monthly, quarterly reports to tell us our variances. If you don't do that to your strategic plan, chances are no one's going to be engaged in it. So some closing thoughts. Um, strategic planning is not about filling in templates. It's not about having a department create a plan that is tossed over to the leadership team. A strategic planning department could help get the data, help sort the data, help present thoughts on the data to management. But the leadership team must engage, must collaborate, and must have open thought to be able to avoid the Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Strategic planning is about agreeing on a direction to go. With a, deliberate, with a deliberate plan developed to get there. And so if you do that, you'll be more likely not to be left behind by a competitive paradigm shift, a technology shift, or even a customer shift. And hopefully, uh, you'll be on a better path um, to getting to your future direction. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you for your time. And I have one more, I jumped the gun here. I think I have one more polling question here for you um, in closing. I would like to keep in mind that yes, this presentation will be sent to you. And yes, this presentation will be available in the Duran Quality Essentials app. Uh, if you haven't downloaded that app, we uh, ask you if you would. It'll have a copy of all the webinars there. But in any case, uh, Dave Fearon will jump on here. Uh, if there are any questions while Dave is summarizing, I will stick around. Uh, I appreciate uh, all your questions so far, and I appreciate your time, and I hope we see you next month. And I will turn that over to Joe. Thank you. My this life. Is, uh, this is Dave Fearon, uh, who uh, will have to practice how to say six Steps for Strategic Success. <laughs> but the good okay. news is about next week, Joe, uh, next month, September 28th, is our next Duran webinar. And this one is easier to pronounce. Leveraging Analytical Resources to Improve Decision-Making Skills. And that'll be at 2 o'clock on the 28th. And I, I have definitely... hands. If you can hear Joe DeFeo, please raise your hand. Okay, by a show of hands, if you can hear Dr. Firon, raise your hands. Right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that that sound check, and I and I will underscore also um, that we uh, we are very fortunate to be able to uh, have Joe involved in the Excellence Master ser Series, which you see on the screen now. And uh, the second session of that one is coming up on the 7th of September uh, with uh, Industry Week. And there is more information about that on the Duran website as well. 
So Joe, thank you again for uh, another fine uh, lesson and something that's important to every one of us, whether we are at the top level of decision making or if we are fortunate to be implementing those decisions. Strategy is important to everyone. You've made that point clearly to all of us. If there are any other uh, questions uh, you, that you want to pop in on the discussion tool, um, Joe, we'll be sure that Joe sees them and we uh, this, uh, will help uh, make sure every concern and question is addressed. So folks, thank you until the next time. Thank you, Dr. Fira. Thank you, everyone. See you in the future.